Welcome to Inkscape. In this quick demonstration, I'm going to show you how to bend a shape uh, to your will. Right here, I've done a quick sketch with the pencil tool that um, is, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to call this a completely original, totally, totally original worm. And, and I've already done a, uh, a nice trace of it. Now, um, in this hypothetical situation, this is going to be an engraving, so I've just picked some gray color. Uh, it turns out that the shaper doesn't care what shade of gray you use, um, as long as it's not black and it's not white. So uh, just shift click on one of these. Um, you can set your stroke style to as thin or as thick as you like, it doesn't actually matter. So, um, yeah, I'm going to pick a gray and leave it at one millimeter and call it a day. Actually, that's a little dark. Okay, so uh, here's my totally original worm. And the here's the problem. I've got a piece of wood of an arbitrary shape. And let's say I think that the wood is going to be shaped like this and then the piece that I actually end up getting is shaped a little bit more like this. Uh, we can accommodate for both of these shapes and I'm going to show you how. Um, in a non-destructive way so that uh, you don't have to keep redrawing your, um, your, your pattern. So the, the first thing is that in this original sketch, I had some uh, lines because, you know, worms are um, not totally smooth. They have little lines on them. And I want to add those lines, but I also want to be able to bend the shape. So uh, the first step here is to go to the node tool. And I'm going to take all of the components of the worm here, select all of them by holding shift and uh, grab all the control points, then click on one of the anchors to switch the uh, transform mode from scale to rotate. And then I'm gonna rotate the eyes and the hat forward. Uh, I'm gonna grab these control points and these control points. And the goal here is to just straighten this little worm dude out so that he's straight. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to bend all of little worm dude after the fact. And that allows me to add those little lines. Uh, and let's see, shift. And there we go. Um, fun fact. These don't have to be the same shade of gray. They're going to get treated the same uh, as engraving lines, no matter what you do. Uh, there are quicker ways to duplicate lots of lines. I'm just going to do a few. So that seems simple enough. Um, so I'm going to select all of these and hit Control G or Command G, depending on your operating system. And now that all of the shapes are grouped, um, fun fact, the layer system in Inkscape are actually groups when you look at, under the hood. Uh, but whatever. We're going to go to Path Effects. And um, actually, let me dive inside of this group by double clicking and click on this body shape. This already has a path effect as applied, the uh, spiro spline, which um, makes it so that I don't have to do as much work to get uh, continuity across the curves, and that'll be important a little bit later. So, um, but double click outside and just get the group. This group doesn't have any path effects applied to it just the shapes that are inside. So let's add bend. Now, 
immediately there's no difference. Uh, I'm going to use Command D on my Mac. Uh, it's Control D if you're on Windows, and that duplicates the group. It also duplicates all of the path effects that are applied. Click on this to get inside of the control path for the bend path effect. Uh, you're gonna start out with two anchor points at the front and the back, or rather uh, the left and the right, which is why we oriented the worm this direction instead of up and down. So I'm gonna grab this control point and move it over here. I'm gonna select the second so that we have the segment between the two selected press insert new node and that allows me to grab the center and if you hit shift a that's the same as setting this to auto smooth uh, that will get you a smooth path um, but yeah i definitely recommend finessing your control path manually uh, you can even scale the paths until you get the desired effect that you're after. So that's how you do that. Uh, and there's one last step. Uh, and uh, just to demonstrate, I'm gonna duplicate this guy and I'm gonna hit this again, just to show off that we could really do whatever we want. Um, add another control point and get a little S curve going. So there you go. You can make them do whatever you want. Worm all over the place. Have fun. There you go. Same worm bent twice, uh, two different ways. Um, you're going to get distortion with this effect, and that's okay. Uh, this handle at the bottom sets how wide the overall path is going to be, and then you'll just have to sort of adjust and finesse or perhaps scale. Remember to hold control when you scale the objects so that they stay um, proportional, even though this affects the proportionality because uh, you'll just get confused otherwise.